Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to be covering a couple of games we've played against the now infamous chess engine, Mittens on Chess.com. Now, in the past couple of days, there have been a couple of people who've won some great games, and we're going to take a look at those games. Now, the first game we're going to be looking at is played between my fellow streamer and very strong grandmaster, Benjamin Bach, playing against the Mittens bot. So this game starts with D4. We get F5 being played here by Mittens. Obviously, this is the Dutch defense. Pretty standard opening. We get G3, Knight F6, Bishop G2 g6 knight f3 bishop g7 castles castles c4 d6 knight c3 and now we get knight c6 now as most people know this is of course the leningrad variation of the dutch defense knight c6 is one of the moves the other moves that are played pretty commonly are c6 and of course um there's no i think a5 is also another move as well as queen e8 actually sorry queen e8 is the, is, is the third move that's played the most frequently at any rate knight c6 is played by mittens bot now we get d5 knight a5 and now here benjamin plays this move b3 now as some of you will remember in 2019 in, in the very last round of the united states chess championship i actually played this with the black pieces against none other than jeffrey jean i played a very long game i did go on to win with this idea of knight c6 and knight a5 however if your opponent is adequately prepared for the specific setup generally it's considered these days to be a little bit dubious obviously in 2019 when i played against jeffrey jeffrey was not a native 1d4 player so i think the whole system came as a surprise to him at any rate benjamin plays b3 in this game a very solid move here and now we get this move 94. now one of the big questions in regards to the mittens bot is how deep of an opening book does it have now if it had an opening book here most likely it'd play something along the lines of a move like c5 um, or I think potentially maybe c6 is maybe also a move as well. However, it plays this move 94 instead. Now, this move is actually a mistake. And after this move, white is significantly better and probably close to winning if you look at the objective evaluation. Uh, if you were to say have two versions of Stockfish playing against each other, I think white would win most of the time. Now, at first glance, 94 looks like a very good move because it opens up this diagonal. So after white. Let's just say white moves the bishop to guard the knight white ends up losing a piece here so this would be very bad and after white plays knight takes e4 black can go bishop takes a1 and black has won a rook for a lone knight and it looks really really good however while black has won a rook for a knight the problem here is that you have this bishop in the corner which is a little bit looser ideas like bishop d2 here maybe bishop a3 as well and this bishop is misplaced this knight on the rim is stuck here you have no squares to go to the pawn chain controls all the critical squares can't go to c6 c4 or b3 here so the bishop and the knight are both very much out of play so so mittens plays c5 here trying to prevent ideas like b4 now if white goes bishop d2 you can just retreat with the bishop and the queen guards the knight on a5 so we get c5 h4 played here by benjamin now maybe not the absolute best move i, I can tell from the evaluations that apparently e4 is significantly better for white but of course for for a human like benjamin it's not a realistic idea so we get h4 being played here mittens plays bishop g7 benjamin plays h5 trying to attack we get h6 knight to e6 being played takes takes g5 and now we get this move e4 here now in this position the computer actually does think that black is kind of back in the game now if he were to bring the knight back to c6 because now after e takes f5 apparently black can play a move like queen a5 and while on first glance it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense the the idea will become very clear shortly first of all the pawn on a2 is very weak secondly this knight can go to either e5 or d4 here and the third fact factor which is very difficult to understand in this position especially without seeing how the game progresses is that this light score diagonal from b1 to h7 is closed for example if white plays a move like queen c2 you can play queen c3 queen to b1 here and now something like a5 a4 maybe even knight d4 here but even bishop f6 potentially closing off uh this diagonal is also an idea at any rate mittens does not play that instead takes the pawn and this is a this is a big mistake now first glance computer even with that without a lot of depth thinks that this is still okay for black but it in fact is not so after knight h2 is played here mittens plays b5 but this this does lose on the spot what mittens probably should have tried to do is play something like knight c6 bishop takes e4 and then something like knight d4 but again in a position like this after move like knight g4 with ideas like f4 creating a lot of threats on this dark square diagonal from c1 to h6 is really really hard to play and the computer actually gives white an advantage whether it's a decisive advantage not completely clear 
At any rate, Mintz plays b5, which is a mistake. We get bishop takes e4, b takes c4. And now Benjamin finds a, finds a fantastic move by playing this move knight to g4 here. Now, even better would have been this move, bishop b1, um, with the idea of queen c2 or queen d3 lining up this battery. But knight g4 is also very strong because now you can play bishop b1, but you can also go f4 and just try to attack on the king's side. And it's very important to note that when you look at the structure here, black has all these pieces on the queen side that aren't doing anything. Whereas white is getting ready to attack on the king side, and it's very, very easy to go after the king, whereas black just can't really take advantage of having this extra rook on a8. We get rook c8 here, and now Benjamin, to his credit, finds bishop to b1. And after this, the game is essentially over because black has no way of stopping either queen c2 or queen d3, threatening checkmate on h7 with this fantastic battery of the bishop and the queen. So Mittens plays rook f6, trying to stop it. If black were to take on b3, stop in queen c2, then you go queen d3. And again, this checkmate idea is just absolutely decisive. One sample line would be rook f6, queen to h7, king to f8. And now a move like bishop b2, just ignoring everything here. Because if black moves the rook, you get check. Maybe there's not an instant checkmate, but after bishop g7, king e8, bishop f5, white is completely winning here. And if you don't take the pawn, say you take on a2, for example, there's this brutal move, knight takes h6. If you go uh, pawn takes bishop queen, I have queen to g8 checkmate. If you go rook takes h6, I take with check and then mate on f7. And if you take with the bishop, I have queen to h8 checkmate. So there simply is no way to stop the checkmate on either g8, h8, or f7 here. So Mittens plays rook f6, Benjamin plays queen c2, we get king to f8. Rook takes e6 here would not do anything because now you can go queen h7, king f8, and now f4 opening up the f file and after king to e8 trying to run away white can either take the bishop on g7 or play a move like bishop to f5 and at any rate the game is essentially over so king to f8 is played here by mittens we get queen to h7 being played by benjamin rook takes pawn pawn to f4 played here attacking actually transposition anyway we get bishop d4 check king to h1 and now queen to c7 again king e8 is a move but after bishop to f5 it's over we get queen c7, pawn takes g5, king to e8, queen to f7, king d7 played, and now bishop to f5. And this dust has really settled here. White is simply going to end up with an extra bishop on the board. And barring any weird checkmates on the light square diagonal from b7 to h1 or d4 to g1, it will all be curtains. So we get c takes b3, queen takes e6, king c6. And here Benjamin plays a move that's good, but it shows how afraid we are kind of of computers when we play against them. Because in this position, white could take the rook on c8, but after queen takes c8, bishop takes c8, b takes a2, you kind of get a little bit scared of this idea like a1. Now, after bishop e3, black has nothing better than simply queen the pawn, you take, and then you can just go g6, bishop h6, and g7, and the rest is very, very straightforward. But again, when you're playing against a computer, you don't want to allow any tricks to happen. And so here, Benjamin plays a very nice move, which is bishop to d2. Very simply, if black takes on a2, you can take the knight for very simplistically and win the game. And if black goes any, any other move, everything is sort of falling apart anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So this is a very, very nice move that just eliminates any chance of a weird swindle. We get king b6, Benjamin takes on c8, trade, takes on a5 correctly here, king takes, king takes bishop, take the queen. And here white simply has a rook and a knight for the bishop, and it's way too much material. So we get b takes a2. Bishop to e6, another excellent move here, preventing any weird counterplay as black has to queen the pawn. And now, even though white only is an extra knight, he has all these pawns on the king's side, and the rest is very elementary. Benjamin mops it up very neatly with knight takes h6, e5. We get bishop takes d5, king to b5, knight f5 played here, and now he gets c4, h6, king c5. Benjamin takes, and now he just pushes the g pawn straight through. And the rest, of course, needs no explanation. Benjamin converts this very cleanly. Um, just a straightforward checkmate here brings the king and the queen and nothing nothing really to write home about we get the clean checkmate on f7 so a very phenomenal game played by benjamin here he, he showed some really good preparation in the opening he played a line that is it's kind of known to be bad but if you do, if the computer does not have the opening book it can't necessarily uh figure it out and he played very thematic game a game that definitely belongs in the textbooks um for for ways of beating the dutch defense so this is the first game that we want to go over now there was another game which occurred today and this is a game that was played between the streamer also known as nemsco and mittens bot as well 
So in this game, it starts with e4. We get e5 being played here, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop b5, the classic Spanish opening, or the Ruy Lopez. You get a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, all very standard so far here. Um, and now we get d4 and d6, and this is a certain variation within the Ruy Lopez. I believe it's called the Zaitsev, although normally when we talk about the Zaitsev variation, normally it's this position with d4, rook e8 versus h6 it's the line that's been played in many matches including the world championship between gary kasparov and of course anatoly karpa at any rate h6 is played we get d4 d6 all standard knight bd2 he takes d4 now this is a little bit dubious normally when black tries to play his lines with knight to b4 usually you want to have some other moves played for example there's some lines where you end up with uh something like a5 a4 being played where there's something where you get the knight cleanly cleanly um protected on b4 white cannot remove the knight with any pawns because the pawn has been pushed to a4 but in this specific position without this white pawn on a2 having been pushed this whole line is a little bit dubious because white can go a3 kicking the knight back from b4 and white has these central pawns that are very very well placed so we get c5 being played here a3 knight to c6 knight f1 being played now this is not the best move here d5 is considerably stronger because after black plays a move like knight to a5 you can go bishop c2 followed by knight f1 knight g g3 you can also move the knight to h2 and then play for f4 and e5 or knight h2 with ideas of rook g3 and some kind of threats on the g file so it's very very dangerous for black to play at any rate nemo plays knight f1 we get cd4 knight takes d4 we get a big trade rook c8 is played and now we get bishop d2 d5 and we get bishop to b4 being played here now this is actually quite bad for black or for white I should say in this position here already it's very tricky to play but you have to go for knight g3 trying to get this knight to f5 as quickly as possible because after d5 is played here if you go e5 there's bishop c5 winning the rook on e3 so we get bishop to b4 bishop takes b4 queen takes b4 he takes e4 and the smoke is cleared and mitten mittens is simply up upon here and it should be straightforward and winning for a 3500 computer correct well maybe not so fast so the game continues with knight g3 we get knight to d5 bishop takes d5 bishop takes d5 knight takes e4 rook c4 queen e1 and everything comes off here and we've reached an equal ending with queens and rooks on the board even number of pawns this should be a draw with correct play but the show goes on we get rook e8 queen to c2 being played here we get queen c8 queen d2 rook e8 queen e2 queen e6 rook e1 trade again very equal position not much happening rook d1 and now the game goes on there are a bunch of moves that are played here again the position remains very balanced not a whole lot happening um h4 rook c5 check check king g6 a lot of shuffling a lot of moves being played here rook e4 we get takes king d2 king f4 king e2 and now this position is essentially a draw here because if it was white's move white would have to go b4 it's the only move and after a5 here white has to play b3 if you go b4 there's a4 here and now you have to move the king let's say you go king e1 for example there's king f3 king king f1 e3 takes king e3 and now if you go king e1 i can go to d3 i can also go to f3 as well either way i go after one of these two pawns and it's completely winning so a5 is played and now there's b3 now here b4 is played we got a4 and now king f5 king d2 king f4 king e2 and this should simply be a draw right here mittens plays this very very strange move e3 now this move still probably is a draw but it gets very very tricky after pawn takes pawn king g3 which is a mistake king e4 here would lead to an instant draw because after king d2 king f3 or sorry king sorry king king f2 king d3 king to f3 here black is actually in time with king to c3 e4 takes e5 you can go king a3 e6 b3 e7 b2 e8 queen b1 queen and with correct play this is probably still a draw but black is going to win this pawn on a4 and have chances to win so what is king g3 this is a ridiculous move this throws the game right away now this is a move that no 3500 computer engine would ever play and i cannot stress that enough it is simply not a move that would be played at any rate king g3 is played we get e4 king f4 king d3 and now white is simply winning the game here because after king d e5 white goes king e3 and the rest is very very straightforward um not much really to say it's just a very simple king and pawn end game here we get takes king g5 king f5 h5 white makes a queen 
course, not super precise. You don't have to run the pawn up the board immediately. You could also just bring the king back and give up the H pawn for the other two pawns, but it doesn't really matter at any rate. Um, and eventually Nemo does win this. We get this position here. Finally, we get some checks, more checks. And of course, it's classic king and queen versus pawn. So what do what can we really make of these two games? Now, obviously, Benjamin's game, um, he showed a great, great idea in the opening to win that game. In this game, however, it's much different. Position was somewhat balanced out of the opening. However, in the middle game, the computer, or mittens, I should say, obtained a big advantage. And suddenly, first of all, it threw away the advantage from being much better being equal. And then it proceeded to make a, a seven, seven point blunder to just lose the game in a completely drawn position. Now, unfortunately, there's some stuff, some news that I've learned, which is also partially why I am making this video. So I have heard from chess.com that apparently over the last day and a half or so, they've been taught, I don't want to say toggling, actually, they've apparently, they apparently have levels that this engine's mittens can play at. And apparently they've been switching it up and down quite a bit, which is what has led to a lot of these inconsistent results. Now, this is very bad for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, when Nemo won this game, against Mittens bot earlier today. I saw her make a make a proud post on Twitter. And there were definitely some people on Twitter who were saying, well, sure, it's easy to win if you use Stockfish, essentially implying that she had to be cheating to beat it. Now, Nemo is a very strong player. She, I think, is around 20, maybe 2250, 2300 feet A. However, it is very clear if she's playing against a 3500 bot, she would not be able to beat the program. Um, so now that we know that chess.com has apparently been changing the levels and playing around with it, um, it's very disappointing because it's led to the situation where some people think that people are cheating, things are happening, it's not completely all above, above board and so forth. However, everything is above board. She did win against the program. However, it appears that, uh, this, this great story in general about mittens and people finally starting to do well against it. Um, appears to be something more than simply um, people playing great games or is there, there is something going on. So it's very disappointing from that standpoint. It's also, of course, very, it's very, very, um, it's very weird for like players like myself and of course, Levy as well, because I think when we're playing against and we're doing really badly and now suddenly we see people beating, it's like, wait a second, what is, exactly is going on? Are we losing our sanity? Is there something wrong with us? Like what exactly is happening? But as, as I, as I said before, um, it does turn out that it, it, it is turning out that, um, Chess.com apparently have been playing around with levels, they've been changing it, and that's what has led to these fluctuations, and these inconsistencies. Now, do I think that takes away from the player's wins? Not at all. Absolutely, Benjamin played a great game. Nemo played a good, good game, great end game. She won the game. Um, but at any rate, th that is the case of what's going on. So I just want to make a short video for you guys um, about this topic because I assume at some point chess.com will say something, but I know because of the attention that Mins has gathered that everyone's tweeting about it, everyone's posting their games, and now we're seeing players winning. Also, another player who won a great game was Benjamin Feingold, by the way, not to be not to uh, not to be forgotten either. But at any rate, that is the case, and that's what's been going on. So I just want to share this information with you guys um, about the current state of affairs. Now, I've been told that that they're going to be switching it back to the hardest level again soon. So I'm guessing that players are probably not going to be beating the beating the bot anytime soon. But we will see what exactly happens. Um, at, as it is so that's that's all i have for now you guys make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't and um, we'll just keep bringing you all the great content on youtube see you guys soon have a good one bye